Hey everybody, welcome back to Track Yards. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Let's excited. See. What? I thought you were Commander Cockings. Well, Commander, <sighs> Commander Excited Cockings. It's my middle uh, name. Exciting your <laughs> Commander's your first name, gotcha. All right, cool. <laughs> Sweet, yeah. Um, and why are you excited? Well, the best thing about the Season 2 trailer, back when, was the D7 reveal. Best thing. The hologram, yeah. yeah. The first actual indication of a canonically prime-looking design literally in the show. The first one. And it was in the Season 2 trailer. Uh, except, I guess, in the tile sequence. But, you know, that's drawn. Now, finally, uh, 12 episodes in, are we 12? Yes. 12 episodes in, after the tease of, of of episode 3, and the tease of last week, we did get a shot of the new <laughs> D7, called D7, uh, Laurel's private ship, and I would love to hear, Stuart, what you think about this design, as I'm sure the fans would, as we are a ship show, and we finally got another ship. Took a little while longer than we thought. And we got to see it. The same shot was in the trailer, just extended a little bit. Um, and I was, I was pleasantly surprised, yet still, that, just surprised too as well because <clears throat> they've obviously done their own thing again. Uh, the nacelles are quite different in appearance than a regular D7, but it could just be because it's an early prototype <laughs> or it's an early iteration. I don't know. Where's the first one? The first. Well, the Chancellor Except ship, so yeah. season one, but we're ignoring that when they said D7. Ah, yes, the D7's in season one, Shh. that's correct. But the first D7. Well, they actually said B7 in the first season. We just didn't, you know, they didn't They didn't say, you know, Beta 7 I'm or whatever. I'm still amazed they didn't just, just change that ADR line in, in the Blu-ray. Like, it was the most easy flub of season one just to quickly change. So anyway, yeah, I'm I'm impressed. It, uh, it it appears to be a D7. Uh, it's got a nice metallic looking coating to it, <laughs> with a crunchy nugget center. I don't know. Um, it just it looks it looks good. It looks like a D7 should, um, more like a Katinga, like we said. But then again, you're just upscaling the, the details a little bit uh, for the modern audience, which is fine. I mean, it's a D7. I wish we we would have got different angles of it though. Uh, just one or two other shots would have been nice, but uh, nothing. We got this, so. Yeah, I, I think this is the best design Discovery's ever done. <laughs> good, good, good call. Good call. Y good your thoughts? Prize. Uh, well, this is closer. A little bit, a little bit. It's twenty-five percent different, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, just just look at the way that back engine module's framed. That's that is the same. I mean, it's it's you know obviously. The, the, the slightly different, but I mean, it is even closer. You know, look where the impulse engines are. There is a, the, the, probably is a torpedo launcher. I'm, I'm, I've upscaled the lighting and there probably is a hole there. You know, uh, the, 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 I mean, the, the engines seem to be the big difference, but they're still the reminiscent pieces. Like, this is the closest thing. And this is one of those things where, though, though, you know, most fans would rather see either the original design or visually updated respectfully. You know, even with Intermirror Darkly, where they visually updated the TOS stuff. And you know the exterior ship has you know more plating and subtle things that make it look better than the you know whatever. Uh, some say well those designs look cartoony and bad, so I guess they're gonna hate this ship because this ship the, you know obviously you can't update the sixties shapes because it looked terrible and bad. So obviously this ship looks garbage because it's the sixties shapes. It's like n no sir no, um, and and you know it looks great. I mean from what we see, which is this yeah. angle. Uh, it looks great. I, I love the engines. I think they're. I'm glad that it's something newer. To be fair, it presents something different, something else. Um, you're right. There are glows, but actually they're not the same as the D7. They're its own unique little spin, I guess. The impulse engines placement's excellent. I'm glad I went for that version of it because multiple variations. Um, and the plating is also relatively subtle on the wings, so it, it's far more uh, Greg Jean's D7 from Trials and Tribulations, where it's very like it's a hybrid, than the full Katinga, which is very like plate heavy so it's actually great hybridized um yeah i think it's excellent i've i've nothing to complain about at all it, it's a well done visual update i can i think this is a you know whoever was given this was told please make a d7 and they did and it looks see, great yeah and i'm wondering if we're going to see more of it i have a feeling we're not <laughs> God, don't say that 
What? I mean, technically, it should still be there hanging out with Discovery at the end of this episode and just be part of the. But we know for a fact that they don't. There are scenes where Jet Reno was in the the, the engineering room or the spore room with Stamets when they were when they got Hugh back. Next episode, the ex- continuing from there, she's gone. I have a feeling we're not going to see this D7 again on, in this season, which is sad because I want to see more views of it. Because um, hopefully the other views still do it justice. They haven't changed any much. You, you can tell here it's pretty much the same. I agree with you. I do like the new engine details. Um, they seem like an older style, more primitive engine because they're a little bit bigger and bulkier. And they've also got like a round um, semicircle thing at the at the end, which is very reminiscent of the original Enterprise. Uh, so kind of speaks to older tech, I guess. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, a, it's a nice addition to do. And it's something that we couldn't speculate on or pick up from the hologram with the way they presented it. They presented the side of the neck, the boom, and then the shot from the top, from the top. You're not going to notice that they did this to the engines. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so kind of clever on their parts, but then again, I feel you know, this this shot was in the trailer, mm. not this exact shot. It was a little bit closer to Discovery. You just saw the top of the D7. But the fact that this is the only shot we got, it it feels a little disrespectful to the fans that have been waiting for it. They should have had a more interesting entrance, like D7, the chance, Chancellor's D7 approaching on screen and have it, like, come out of warp and maybe pull up alongside or something instead of just, oh, line of dialogue, the D7 is here with the chancellor all right and next shot is like this shot and then very quickly pan over it it's like wow give us something more than that we've been waiting for a while for this it's almost it's almost like they're like yeah you guys wanted this we didn't want to do it but you made us so here you go here it is a little bit of a screw you guys to the fans kind of what it feels like to me it's where this is also a shorter episode uh, and i know i know they're saving money for later on but I mean, you had plenty of seconds to have this sit with <laughs> warp in, and we're like, ooh, and it yeah. goes overhead and meets Discovery. And it's a real, and it, a cheap goddamn shot, guys. I make these all the time. You know, it's not anything strenuous. Give us this big, even like the opposite to motion picture style, where that goes on the top, but you see it come yeah. on the bottom. It's this big little symbol, and then you hear, and then part of Lorel's beat, yeah, as it comes in, and they were like, oh, yes. Like we had with the Enterprise, ironically, last episode of last season. You know, they quickly changed their season plans. They said, shit, we'll put in an Enterprise. Ah! Then they did. It was great. And they that, had the, the, the music beat to go along with it. That's yep. exactly right. Needed yeah. that. Needed that. Uh, and, and it's not like this was an overly long episode. They could have spent an extra 10, 15 seconds to do a yep. nice scene. That's all it takes. One shot. You yep. have the model. You don't see the planet until the end. Therefore, it's just space and a ship would have literally been a day's work and then more than a day to, to composite it together. Uh, yeah, oh, it's it's tricky. I feel like, I feel like it's it, just like the Enterprise in the start, I feel like it's still teasing. We know the Enterprise in the next episode. I feel like, because I, I raised in our review that the end of this episode feels really hollow because they say the Discovery is outgunned. And I said instantly, yes, they've got 30 ships, You've got over 6,000. We said this up in the previous episode. They're active. I'm sure, you know, 500 are relatively able to fight. And since the Discovery can spore jump anywhere, apparently, still, you just tell close, you tell, you know, 50 ships to meet up. You jump in. You say, as many more join us. Yes, I'm sure 601 ships en masse are stronger per ship. So you need numbers. But then the entire point of saying route gun becomes irrelevant. And so I'm, I'm assuming, I'm giving them a lot of credit here that they can't use Starfleet ships because Control can influence them. So it's actually a risk. Because obviously Control knows Section 31 ships, just like Wrath of Khan Nebula Battle, they have access to information. And while I'm sure the, the you know, well, I mean, remember they tried, they, they assumed all Section 31 ships could purge Control. If they couldn't, I wouldn't put it past it at all. Just as soon as a Fellowship warps in, they can send over a virus in some clever way. But Klingon systems use different systems you can't infect Klingon ships in the same way and so the only thing you can do is bring in Klingon reinforcements because it's that you know their threat too 
So that might be my assumption that maybe, um, just like in other shows, you know, we have <laughs> these two ships, uh, Discovery Enterprise in this battle, and then, you know, at the last minute, you know, <laughs> 5D7s, you know, come out of warp, and they're the epic cavalry. They can't be infected. They've got the most absolute most advanced ships in this era currently, because they're at, literally, the paint is falling off them. You know, the, the plastic is literally ripping off them as they go, you know. And then they then see this epic battle of, you know, the, the rails on the view screen says, I will take care of them! And Tyler's like, be careful! And she's like, I know! And so, yeah, I can see that being quite a clever way. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they've thought this I don't think through ahead. That. But that would be a nice I don't think way. We're gonna see, like, like I said, yeah, they're outgunned. It would be nice to have this ship join the battle and this ship be unaffected by, sec by control, exactly. But I don't think we're going to see this ship again. It's just going to not be there next episode. But you, you see how natural my plot device is oh. there? Absolutely, they're, they're in Klingon space. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. They're deep in Klingon space, and so, you know, if you know, okay, I can bring six ships to bear, you know, ten ships, um, you know, so I think we'll wait and see, as we've said every episode, we'll wait and see what they do. <laughs> wait and see. They're starting to disappoint us week on week, or at least me and you over their, their plot choices. Um, but that's my crossing fingers of how this ship will be, and then it will be epic, because then you will see Discovery and Enterprise with this small fleet of D7s fighting the good fight against Section 31, I think it could be an epic battle. And Lorel gets to test out a new Birds of Prey. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, D7s. And then, if you imagine after this threat's ended, she can you know, view screen on them and say, you've seen the power of our new D7s. Just remember, we're building these faster than you are. You know, uh, we're uh, you know, a steady, a steady uh, ceasefire here. But our ships... Guys... You stay in your area, we'll stay in our area, okay? Cool. And they're like, yes, ma'am. So I can imagine, you know, because that's a great way to power play. Like, if all five D7s survive somehow, like, they're that epic. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, but I think it's a tremendous, from what we can see, design. I can't wait for Eagle Moss. Obviously, they're going to do one. They're the, they're the, they're the, they're the guys that will do one. Um, and I can't wait to see the other things. I'm, I'm sure as we see other views, we'll be disappointed in a few details. Uh, just because, you know, they have to change things for the sake of change. Which is why I'm kind of impressed. If you look at the way the structure of the hull is, it's so similar. Yeah. I think they they showed restraint in not changing things. Simple things that could have been changed. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Discovery, the Enterprise, every single element is different because we had to change it. I was still with you know the old team, turned John Eves, and they changed it after the fact. So I think this is a different modicum of design. And so you know, if when we get season three fully in production and like doing its thing we'll probably see more familiar versions of other ships just because that is a good way of getting fans on board and getting easy cred because you gently visually update something and everyone wins. It is it is that easy. It really is. And so well done. Can't wait to see more views and uh, good job. Yeah. Uh, I'm Like I said, I'm impressed. I'm looking forward to more. And yes, the Eagle Moss ship, like, that'll be cool to have to see. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope we do see more shots of the ship in the next two episodes because only two left. But I have a feeling it's not going to be their next episode. It's just like, oh, yeah. Because Discovery has that trope of, like, forgetting what happened in the last episode. Oh, my... yes. But yes, anyway. We, were we in Klingon space? Oopsie. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it's not as if it takes three weeks to warp out of Klingon space. Oopsie. <laughs> you know, whatever. Anyway, well done, guys. <laughs> Yes, put your comments down below. What do you guys think about this ship? And as always, like, subscribe, click the notification icon, and join our social media. Come over to Facebook. We talk about great things like this ship in a great community and great people talking about it. So if you want to come interact with that, by all means, use the links down below to join our social media. And uh, there's also other links down there that can help us out, help out the channel. And uh, I, I don't know much about them. So Samuel's going to oh, fill you in on them. How's but that? You, but you wrote them. Um, no, uh, <laughs> I mean, we talk about Eagle Moss. You can buy an Eagle Moss ship with a code down below, with a code Trekyards, with a link down below. Put that code in, and you will save money buying anything you want, pretty much. So it's a great way of supporting our channel because they know that you've used our code, and we get cool things from that. Or buy a shirt, buy a pillow, buy all the cool things. There's a great store down below. Click that and buy whatever you want. And again, all helps to support us. Or one-time donation at trekkers.com if you can just give a little bit, like a thank you or a tip. Or if you want to be a regular contributor and see our work continue on for hopefully years to come, then go to Patreon, which is a great way, well, the way of supporting us because uh, that, and, that and Super Chats because it is a regular amount coming to us each and every month. That is our backbone of support. Um, and with that, we have confidence to keep going, keep making, and keep planning. We always have new plans. Um, so thanks so much. 
That's right. And until next time, guys, and hopefully another great discussion on D7 or some other mm. cool ship. Mm -hmm. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Kings. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.